Well, I, I love this opening story, I think, because I, it resonates so well with me. Um, I don't know how many of you, when you were in college, tried to pay attention or find out or discover the easy classes. <laughs> Can I get a witness? You know, who gives the easy A or the easy B, right? We just kind of need to pepper our life with some of those because some of the others we don't have a choice with. But when it comes to electives, I mean, we want to know which ones we can get by in. And so this guy was a freshman and he'd asked around and sure enough, he had discovered that uh, there was a, a retiring professor and this was going to be his last year. And he had, he'd really been a breeze. I mean, that was kind of the, 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 the talk on the college campus. You need to take this class. It's an easy A. Now, he didn't even know what the class was for. He, he saw the title ornithology and thought it sounded really important and that his parents would be impressed. So he signed up because he knew it'd be an easy A. Well, first day he's in class, he gets the syllabus and he's surprised. It's not the old professor who's fixing to retire. As a matter of fact, he retired early. And now there was this new dude with a PhD with a chip on his shoulder and something to prove that he was the smartest professor in all the land and all of his students were going to have to get with it in order to pass this test, pass this class. Well, he hung in there. He was doing okay, he was passing it, but it came down to the final test. He walked in for the final exam and there on the, the boards were pictures of bird legs, 25 pairs of them. And the professor said, this is your exam, your whole grade will be based on this. You need to identify what, the, 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 what kind of birds they are by simply looking at their legs. Well, there was this gasp in this room of freshmen, three, 400, 500 freshmen, like, can you believe this? One kid stood up and said, that is stupid. The professor said, I beg your pardon? He said, you're serious. You, you want us to identify birds by looking at their legs? He said, that's correct, young man. And if you'd have studied, you'd have been able to do that. The young man said, that is stupid. I quit. I'm done. And he started to walk out. The professor said, young man, what is your name? He pulled up his pants. He said, you tell me. <laughs> Thank goodness we're not identified by our legs, amen? I mean, there are many identifiers uh, for people to kind of describe who we are to someone uh, based on our size and the description of that, the color of our hair, the color of our eyes, the way in which we wear our hair perhaps, any of these things, our height um, or how tall we're not. Uh, the interesting thing is about any of those identifiers though, you could give all those identifiers and still those identifiers stacked up uh, could represent many people not just you, but there is this one feature that all of us have that sets us apart. There is this one unique identifier, and it is our fingerprints. Indeed, from the time we were being formed in our mother's womb and the ambiotic fluid would flow across our fingertips and hands, it is the flow of that ambiotic fluid that would create ridges in our hands that would become known as our fingerprint. The sole, unique, detailed, difficult to alter, durable over the life of an individual fingerprint as that thing that identifies us. It's a, it's a, a lifelong marker of identity. Well, I got to thinking about that, and as I understand God's purpose for you and for me, His desire for us really is to be His fingerprints in this world, isn't it? that wherever we go and whoever we touch, whoever we're around, that we leave an impression of God upon them. The God who reigns inside of us because we've invited Jesus Christ to be the redeemer of our life, the healer of our soul, and now we're going to represent Jesus Christ. So everybody we come into contact with, we're actually leaving impressions upon them. Now, I'm not here today to say, now I want you to go out and touch everybody physically. No. But there is a sense in which God's fingerprints through you and through me, through those of us who have received Him, are His heart prints. And so we're invited to leave heart prints as the impression of God through us on everybody we meet, every day we meet them in any way that we can. This comes out of a poem that I found entitled Heart Prints. It is written by the most famous author of all, Anonymous. Whatever our hands touch, we leave fingerprints on walls, on furniture, on doorknobs, dishes, books. As we touch, we leave our identity. Oh God, wherever I go today, help me to leave heart prints. Heart prints of compassion, 
of understanding and love, heart prints of kindness and genuine concern. May my heart touch a, a lonely neighbor or a runaway daughter or an anxious mother or perhaps even a, a dear friend. Lord, send me out today to leave heart prints. And if anyone should say, I felt your touch, may that one sense your love touching through me. Well, we've said it a thousand times and we're going to continue to say it because it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to preach it and proclaim it and challenge each of us to live it until the Lord returns. And that is His love. His divine love. There's nothing more powerful. Nothing. Now, now you and I in our self-righteousness or our self-reliance or our self-confidence, we pay attention to the world way too much and, and try to put our confidence in things like military power or intellectual pursuits or personal achievements or retirement accounts or politics and government, international alliances. Listen, all of those are good, but none of those, even all put together, come close to the power of divine love. They can't. God created us to be Him and His impression in this world, His heart print. When we read the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, we understand that love is the will of God for us. Love is the single most authentic sign of being a follower of Christ, of being a disciple. Love is the, most, is the mark of being a member of the Jesus family as we walk together and we do life differently than anybody else. Love is the hope of our world. Now, we need all those other things I listed in our, in our reliance and confidence, but they are not the answer in and of themselves, not even close. The answer has been, is, and will always be God. Can I get an amen? The answer is God and what God offers to you and to me and why He created us. Look at what we're even doing here. As Bonaire Baptist Church, whether it's a Buford Road or, or, or the village or James River as a church, we have a mission here, a mission to proclaim the grace of God, growing followers of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, it means we're here to tell about God's heart print. We're here to talk about and tell others about Jesus Christ, what He did on the cross so that we can live now and forever with Him. And we grow one another. Well, that's our mission. How are we going to do that? Well, how's that? What's our vision? How are we going to put that into being? Well, we're going to create a place to belong and a place to become. A place to belong in that we welcome everybody. We want everybody to come in just as they are. We're not looking for any finished products. Hello, or none of us would be here. Hello. We're looking for people. People with a heartbeat who will come and allow God to minister to them through us. And, and together then we, we become which means we all work and hold each other accountable to becoming really uh, what I would call God's kind of full, full dream for us, His full desire that we would live into the image He has for each of us. And we're going to do all of that in a culture. Not a culture that's being lived out there, but a culture that comes straight out of the Bible. It's being emotionally healthy and spiritual. We cannot be spiritually healthy without being emotionally mature. We've learned that, and so we're learning skills, biblical skills, about how to treat each other. How do we do that? Because we do not want to do that in here as is being done out in the world. We're learning to be members of a Jesus family, and we treat, different, we treat each other differently in that culture than we do out in the, in, in the, in the secular world. It's a part of who we are. Well, our scripture today doesn't introduce a suggestion. It's not kind of a polite ask. In no way, shape, shape or form is it a, a kind of, well, I, I hope you'll do this. I hope you'll choose to do this. If, if, you see, if you see your way clear to do I hope you'll do it. No, 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 no. This is a command. It is a command. It is a demand upon your life and my life in order to be God's heart print through us. What is His command? This law of God. My command is this, He says. Love each person. Other. And then he defines how to do that. As I have loved you. He goes on, greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Now he's not asking, he's not suggesting. He's saying, friends, this is a command. 
I demand that you do this. I need for you to be the one who allows my heart print to flow through you so that when you come across people in any way, shape, or form, at any point in time, you become the impression, we become the impression of God upon them. We leave a mark. And he's saying there is nothing more powerful than the great I am's love, divine love. Step back from that a moment. You'll begin, I think, to see the scope of this. We understand God's divine love heals physically. We know it has the ability to heal people physically. Dr. Carl Menninger, a great uh, psychologist, once said the most tragic word, the most tragic word, word in the human lang language today is this word, unloved. Unloved. Now, if you've never had that feeling, you're blessed. But those of us who have ever felt that understand what it means to go, uh, to, to go unnoticed, unwanted, unneeded, unappreciated. When you get the depth of that kind of heartache in your life, you understand it takes a certain kind of healing to fix that. Dr. Carl Menninger did extensive research on the effects of someone who is feeling unloved and found it to be incredibly destructive, incredibly devastating in nature. And then he went on to say the converse of that, the truth. Listen, and I quote, Love has the power to heal people, both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. Now that's God's plan, folks. That whether, it, if I'm the unwanted one, the, un, the, the lonely one here, the unneeded, the unappreciated, I need that sense of God's heart print on me from you in order to feel God's heart print, His impression on me, that none of that other stuff is true. I am wanted, I am needed, I am appreciated. And perhaps you're the one that needs to give it. I'm the one that needs to give it, and we even find healing in that. It's a two-way street here. The heart prints of God love come and love us and help restore us, cure us, and heal us. A few years ago in Sweden, they were following this case of a, a woman who had been... Uh, um, kind of comatose really. They would get her up every day. They would dress her and clean her up, put clothes on her and put her in a, a rocking chair because that's all she wanted to do. She never spoke a word to anybody. Most of the other nurses had kind of abandoned her. Uh, they had tried to be kind to her and there was no, no affect from her. There was no reciprocation. There was no appreciation for all the nurses had done. And uh, a nurse came in and said, I, I'm, I'm going to adopt this one. There's something about her. I'm, I'm going to adopt her. And so this nurse decided to spend some extra time with this lady every day. And so what she started doing at first was just pull up a rocking chair and just rock next to her. Never said a word, just rocked with her. A few days later, she would not only rock with her, she'd reach over and she'd pat her on the hand. After about a week of this, this, this patient stopped rocking, turned and looked at the nurse and said, you are so kind, and then went right back and started rocking. Well, lo and behold, they continued this exercise and this lady began to talk every day. Two weeks later, she was released from that home. Don't tell me God's love can't cure. Don't tell me that what God wants to do between, through you and through me, His heart print doesn't have the ability to heal people because we become His love made flesh. We become His love lived out. We become His love that can heal physically when we touch somebody. You ever felt the power of touch? Listen, I was thinking about this all week. Man, I remember as a kid getting, getting belly aches, stomach aches, and, and I'd feel like I'm going to die. And my mama would come in there and just start rubbing my back. And what would happen? Gone. She had the touch. I know what that feels like to have that, that cure, that, 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 to have that pain taken away. We got folks all around us who feel unwanted. Look carefully. And God is saying, I need you to leave my heart print on them, make an impression upon them. God's love through his heart prints not only heal physically, but they heal emotionally. That's right. Anybody ever been sad? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've ever been sad. Well, some of you are just lying now, but never mind. <laughs> or sleeping, I don't know which. I dare say we've all felt sadness. And if you've ever felt sadness, then you understand if I say, have you ever had a broken heart? Have you ever heard anybody say, yeah, they died of a broken heart? That's the power of how deep a broken heart and sadness can affect someone. 
You and I have the opportunity to be God's heart prince to introduce and to live out to those around us who were sad or emotionally discouraged or depressed. And we know this is true because so many of us have experienced this and have had the opportunity to overcome a broken heart. We've been there and done this. Even Jesus experienced this in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was bowing there and, and tears of blood were coming down his head and, and he was crying saying, Oh God, let this cup pass for me. In other words, please don't make me go through this. As you know, if you keep reading, there in the Gospel of Luke in the 22nd chapter, the 43rd verse, this is what it said. And there appeared an angel to him from heaven strengthening him. Wow. I don't know about you, I've had angels in my life. No, 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 I'm not talking about in the white cloth and the halo, right? If you've seen those, see me after service. (laughs) I mean, you could have, it's possible, but the angels I've seen look just like you, look just like me. And God says, I I, I need to speak through you. I, I need you to reach out and say something. I need you to reach out and touch somebody. I need you to reach out and do something for someone. I There's more testimony in every one of our campuses right now. We could go from person to person and say, tell me about your heartache. Tell me when you had a broken heart and God sent you an angel and helped heal your sadness, heal you emotionally. And there would be story after story. I hear it all the time from widows and widowers who have lost their their soulmates, their, their, their partners for life. I mean, they've been doing marriage 50, 60, 70 years, and all of a sudden, there's a void. That person is not there. You're talking about sadness and brokenness. Do you know what God has done for them? Their testimony is He sent angels. He sent heart prints. Heart prints. And their testimony would be they came and they ate with me. They sat with me. They cried with me. They, they, they didn't have any answers, but they just said, I'm going to be here for you. This is what God's heart prints look like. When we go and we extend His love made flesh through us to help heal those who were brokenhearted. But thank God, even though the power of Him healing physically, because there were people all the time wanting to get close to Jesus' touch. You remember that? Listen, God is living in us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. He wants to heal in the same way for us touching somebody. The same way emotionally for us to help be the the, the, the cure, the one to bring the cure of that. But more than all of that, I think he wants you and I to be the heart prince to heal people spiritually. To heal the broken connection between them and God. So that we can be reconcilers, ambassadors for Christ. All of these are biblical terms. Now, I want you to make sure you understand this because there, there perhaps may be someone here today uh, listening who, who feels like, yeah, 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 but you can't, you can't really tell me anything or show me anything that describes God's love really in that way. So I wanted to illustrate this for you. So I, I stopped by yesterday and got a fresh $20 bill. There's nothing wrong with this $20 bill. Now, here's the deal. I want to give this away. I want to give this to somebody. Now, I want you to know something. There are no strings attached Don't be looking at me like you don't believe me. I'm telling you, there are no strings attached. I'm going to give this to somebody and you're going to walk away with this $20 bill. I I don't need to know what you do with it. I don't need to know if you give it to somebody or invest it. Do whatever you want to do with it, right? That's not it. I'm going to give this $20 bill to somebody. Now, if you want this $20 bill, raise your hand. Raise it high. Raise it high so I can see. Come on. Some of you don't trust me. Put your hand down. Listen to me. I'm going to give this $20... I'm going to give this $20 bill to somebody. I'm not walking out of here with it, okay? No strings attached. No, I'll choose who gets it. (laughs) You wouldn't believe that. Okay, come up here. Come on, give her a hand. Sure, come on. No, come around here. Come around here. You asked for it now. No, 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 be quiet. Listen to me. Did I talk to you before this sermon about this? No. Did I mention, have we planned this? There's in no way, shape, or form that I have worked this out with you, right? That's, okay. That, that he's telling the truth. Okay, I want you to have this $20 bill. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, come back. Come back here. Wait, no, 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 I just want to do, just trust me, trust me. You still want it? Oh, yes, sir. Well, wait a minute. Don't tear it. 
You still want it? Yes, sir. Okay. I can still Go have ahead. It. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. I'd hate to see what would happen if I'd have held up a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> you understand what just happened? You're worth more than any twenty dollar bill. You've been stepped on. You've been wadded up in life. You've been crushed. And God says, I still want you. I still want you. And that is the message we need to send and give to every person we come across. God values them. Doesn't matter what's happened. Whether they deserved what happened to them, earned it, or it was just handed to them, it's not the point. God says, I love you. And that is our heart print job to go tell that news. It's an invitation. I, I, let me close with this. I, I don't know how many of you remember in days gone past when Sunday schools would have something called a Sunday school picnic. It was after church, after preaching, and they would decide, hey, as a Sunday school, you know, go home, grab a sandwich, pick up something somewhere, and come to the local park. We're going to meet and just have fellowship. We're going to have a picnic. And so this guy said, that's great. I'll do that. And so after preaching, he ran home, opened his refrigerator. Man, he had... A stale bread, bologna, and mustard. That's all he had. Well, so he slammed it together, made his sandwich, put it in a paper bag, and took off for the park. Got to the park, sat out on the picnic bench where the folks from the Sunday school class were gathering. And this family came and sat next to him. And man, they unloaded there on the picnic table was fresh fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, coleslaw. I mean, you, you name it. They had it. Fresh biscuits. And then, oh, two chocolate pies. And the brother's sitting down there with his bologna sandwich. Well, they had a prayer. They said amen. And he reached into his sandwich and he started to eat it. And the lady of the family said, hey, why don't you put your sandwich with ours and we'll just share everything we got. He said, no, 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 I, I couldn't do that. I, I, no, she said, no, really, we like bologna. Come on, bring your sandwich, put it with ours and we'll just, we'll put it all together and have a feast. What do you say? Finally, he gave in. Oh, man, did he give in. He ate fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits and two slices of chocolate pie. The description of that meal was this. He came as a pauper, but he ate like a king. And that is the same description that God wants you and I to offer to everybody being his heart print everywhere we step. Maybe you need to receive a heart print today. Come as you are. Crumpled, stepped on, wadded up in life. Come receive. Or maybe God's given you an image of somebody and He's commanding you to go and be His heart print today. Which one? Pray with me. Lord, in many ways, we enter into the most dangerous time. The most dangerous time of any proclamation of the gospel. In many ways, the most sacred moments where we now have the opportunity to respond. Where we now are paying attention to the pneuma nudge in our life, the Holy Spirit desiring to have its way in us. I pray at this very moment, O oh God, that our eyes would see clearly, our hearts would beat fast, our ears are listening, and our minds are open to the movement of your Holy Spirit that is informing us of what we need at this moment. For the one who needs to receive that heart print to come crumpled, wadded up, beaten down by life, come and receive the heart print of Jesus Christ today so that you can begin to enjoy an abundant life and the promise of eternal life forever. 
And Father God, I also pray for the ones here of us today. We've experienced that, but we know we're to be your fingerprints, your impressions, your heart print. It's not an ask, it's a command. Make it so in our lives, Father. This invitation is not mine, but yours. Find us faithful now. Amen.